They say you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but uh, not when it comes to Tasca. I'm going to show you a couple of them. Hey guys, it's been a while since I've made a Tasca video and if you one of my new subscribers and you never heard of Tasca, think about it as an automating platform for Android, well, specifically for your phones and tablets, and you can do pretty amazing stuff with it, from making the home automation feel like yours automation instead of Google automation. or just simply creating Android profiles for your phone that makes it really awesome. Like, for example, making it recognize a stand and selecting your night hours when placed into that stand. So if you are new to this concept, there is an intro to Tasca in here, so you can click through and learn more. But in this video, I'm going to show you what I've learned from actually revisiting one of my very old profiles to test headphones. And I know it's one of those projects you're probably going to be this interested in, because, well, why would you be interested in? It's just a profile that collects some data from both of devices, mainly about the battery use, and saves them to my server. It's not particularly interesting for you, but I've learned a couple of things along the way, and these are the things I'd like to share with you today. A couple of years ago, I've created a very simple Tasker profile to actually count the time from uh, the start of the task to the end of the task, which was the Bluetooth device being disconnected, and that would give me a duration of how long the Bluetooth device would be connected. Obviously, I would be playing some media, very long playlist on a loop, to make sure that there is some data activity and the device is using actually power. Things got more advanced since then, and now in latest versions of Android and with modern Bluetooth devices, you can actually monitor your battery percentage of the devices connected, which is super useful if you just, you know, don't want to run out of charge. It still doesn't tell you how long it's gonna last, so I wanted to revisit my original profile and make it slightly better so I could collect more granular data about the battery consumption and submit it to the server. And that's what that Bluetooth thingy is. So I've redone the project from the ground and, well, I came up with a couple of cool solutions that I'd like to share with you. Let's start with dynamic networking. And what do I mean by dynamic networking? Well, it's a not very complicated profile because in my case, it uses the Wi-Fi location of basically which SSID I'm connected to, to set a couple of variables. And those variables are usually responsible for either the DNS or URL of the server that I'm updating my information or uploading the information to. And that will change based on my location. So if I'm at home and connected to home network, then it will upload that information to URL with my home server location. But if I'm away and for some reason that data needs to be uploaded when I'm outside of my local network, it will use the DNS value instead and do it this way. But where am I heading with this? It's actually quite useful, instead of hard coding all those URLs and credentials and whatnot into variables instead. That way, if any one of them will change, all you have to do really is update them in a single project or profile, and that will reflect across all of your profiles, removing the need of you actually tracing every single action in various profile and updating that in the process super useful and this is what you should be doing as well. I even added a special toggle, a task that I can run to change my home server to a test server in case I don't want my data to be uploaded to my home server database and mess up everything in the process. It is useful, so experiment with that. As an added benefit, if you ever want to share that profile or project with your friends or public, your sensitive credentials not going to be shared. Instead, the user on the other end will receive a task with variables that they'll have to populate themselves. 
The second thing that you should be doing is outsourcing. And I don't mean outsourcing all your hard work to people in countries with poor income. I mean outsourcing your uh, actions to another task. Don't be afraid of making your task list look messy. I know you might be tempted to get them more organized and keep them in project relevant order. However, Tasker won't care about it and there are other benefits of outsourcing your actions to another task. One of the good examples from this project was actually outsourcing my notifications to a separate tasks. Instead of calling out a notification action, which I used to create and update the notification, I would use perform task action instead and use the same auto notification actions every time. And I won't blame you if you don't see an immediate benefit of that. However, just imagine a scenario in which you have to update that notification or change how the notification looks like or what sort of information it will contain. Now, in the usual scenario, you would have to hunt down every instant of auto notification action and update it or just copy and paste a new version. But if outsourced to another task, all you have to do is open that task and modify one auto notification action, and then all your instances will be referring back to this task, making it basically updated from there on. And if you want to pass a new data into this task, that is also possible, so look into that too. Another task a tip for you is to create a setup task. It's a very useful tool to set up your project, especially if you decide to share it with the public or your friends. Now, Taskinet actually allows you to select a task and run it at start as a default task to basically set up everything the way you like. And if you combine it with outsourcing, it's a great little thing to actually set the entire environment, including all the variables and all the user-defined content before you start using Tasker project. So in my project, I decided to take advantage of this. I've created a separate task, which is basically a setup task, but I didn't make this task to run at startup. I have a completely different task that basically does that and it outsourced the setup as a first action. Why, you might ask? Well, because it creates an opportunity to run this task only once if you set certain variable. So in my main thread, main task, I use the perform task action to start a setup task. At the end of that setup task, uh, additional variable is set to true that the task has been run and in the next run, that outsource task, it's going to be ignored because it no longer meets the if condition. It's a great little trick to run additional task once and only once, and then obviously you still have ability to change that variable manually in case you want to change something and trigger this task again. And speaking of project setup and the variables, I have something cool as well. Previously, I outlined how I name my projects, tasks, profiles, and variables. In short, I use an abbreviation of the task name as a prefix to each task, variable, etc. This way I can easily find it using filter options and, well, you don't have to scroll endlessly through the list of variables to find the, way, the one you need in case you don't remember the full variable name. Now, in this project, I came to a step in which I had to clear several different variables at the same time and a couple of hours too. Now, the problem with clearing uh, variables using a pattern matching was that, well, why I could easily clear all my variables, started with, in this case, bt underscore, I would also clear my setup task variables, which was undesired because I only wanted to clear certain variables. That led me to conclusion, if I would change the prefix for the setup variables to something like, for example, bt and lowercase s, and then underscore, that would differentiate regular project variables from the setup project variables, and then I could use that single action to actually clear all my variables that meant to be cleared after the project ran its course. So when I use variable clear action with the pattern matching, it no longer clears my setup variables, and that saves me a lot of time. If there was only a way to clear the arrays the same way, that would be cool. Unfortunately, we'll have to use the clear arrays instead. And speaking of arrays, I have a tip for you as well. It's about submitting data to the end of the array, something I really needed to do in order to keep my array data in a chronological order. I've learned something on Tusk Reddit, you should definitely sign up in there, and the difference between using a hashtag and hashtag less than 
to count the number of indexes and the number of elements in the array. If you're using hashtag only, it will give you the number of elements in the array. For example, if you have an array like this, it only has three elements, but it has six indexes. If you ask Tasker with a hashtag how many elements it has, the value is going to be three. So if you're trying to push something to the end of the array using hashtag, you actually might be surprised to learn that it's not going to end up on the last index of the array. However, if you are using hashtag less than instead, it will give you the number of indexes created for this array. Not elements, but indexes. Chances are you can have an array with six indexes created and every single index is going to be empty. So in this case, your total number of indexes should be six, while total number of R uh, elements in the array is going to be zero. The last tip I've got for today is about debugging. Because I've used already existing projects to kind of build upon, I had some foundation. It gave me an opportunity to start fresh, to, well, make the project better, thanks to my better knowledge that I've got of Tasker, and an opportunity actually to look at my previous code and find mistakes. One of the things that I'm a little bit embarrassed to mention was a a bug that I overlooked completely when creating one of my Tasker uh, tutorials about converting time in seconds to human readable format. While that project worked flawlessly most of the time, when the measurements was taken on the minute, it would produce a very weird result, which I didn't expect nor tested because it's impossible to test for every given time frame. But during this project, I quickly realized that there is a problem with the code and I spent a couple of minutes actually trying to figure out what went wrong. Solution to that was actually quite simple, but it took me a moment to realize the mistake. When the task was clocking at 60 seconds, I quickly discovered that there is no condition for 60 seconds, and that's why I don't have a minute value in my time frame. So I quickly fixed that by adding equal sign in the equations uh, for abbreviating time. And that solved the problem, and I was getting my labels for the graphs correctly. And I'm actually glad that I came across this mistake because previously I would take the same scriptlet and blindly copy and paste it to my new project without thinking, hoping for the best results. So yeah, if you ever go through your older projects and if you ever reuse your previous code, chances are you're gonna find the mistakes you haven't found before and that's a very good thing. So those were my tips and tricks for using Tasker this time around. So if you have any cool ideas what you can do with Tasker or some tips, then leave them in a comment down below. Additionally, in the description of this video, you're gonna find an article with the links to a Reddit thread and a couple of other useful Tasker materials to read, so don't hesitate and check it out. As for now, big thanks for watching. As usual, I do not have a posting schedule, so if you're interested what's next, and one of the things that's gonna be next is probably I'm going to use those data sets and learn how to um, send them to Node-RED and put them into Postgres uh, database because that's something I'm planning to do as well. So if you're interested in that, you know how it works, I don't have to teach you. And alternatively, follow me on any given social media or just uh, give me a message there about Tasker tips and tricks that you find very useful. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.